I found this uh, old landers and gear made time switch well, the internal parts is actually really well made a bit rusty can't remember where I got it from but I found it somewhere um, it got one of these induction disc uh, a copper disc driving the mechanism just curious want to see if it still works need to hold it exactly so it's moving I'm going to connect this up um, I'm going to measure through the call first and uh, there's a potential call so that gets uh, 230 I'll probably start it with the variac at 110 and then see if it starts spinning put some wires on here and then uh, yeah keep see what happens well that's not a good sign the call is open circuit so I need to investigate what went wrong here I'm kind of loosened the screws already a bit, so I'm going to take this call assembly off and have a look what's wrong with it. Hopefully, it all comes apart easy. Got some codes on here 200, some codes 200, and it looks like 6,000 or something. Oh, this is going to peel the tape off and see what we can find. Okay, yeah, see if we carefully can open this call up without cutting myself. Careful so they'll cut in the winding. I hope it's a lead in wire spoken. You never know on these things. Probably the easiest way if this is stoofed, rewind it for lower voltage. I don't really need this clock movement, but I like to see it spin. Oh, here's paper, I think. I'm going to look what we find under here. Radio is too loud, turn it off. Ah, there we go. Aha. That's very fine wire in it. There we go, you can see the evidence here. See if we get a better shot on it. It has been subjected probably to the wrong voltage. It looks like it's pretty cooked. Yeah, I see broken ends here. That's not good, so that's a uh, Burnt out. Uh, the way they've made this call is the lead in wire that's a thicker wire here. Yeah, so that's cooked. But it should be a relatively easy rewind. Well, I've not got, got, got that gauge, but I can probably rewind for 12 or 24 volts or something AC. <laughs> I'm making slow progress. I'm trying to prise this core off. I'm not sure if this bar, this is one continuous piece of metal. Who knows how they have wound this call, but I'm yeah, trying to push it off here with a screwdriver and it's not that easy. So I'm trying to prise this off here. Yeah, the meter has a copper disc. Um, it's a bit dusty, but it's uh, got an error on it too, so it would have been left turning, a left turning device like this. Okay, a bit of wiggling. I managed to get this sleeve on top of here, and I'm not sure if this is the right way, but I need to get the thing apart to get the call off. So I'll document this because maybe some people who work on clocks. So this is a shunt, copper, dead short basically. So it's probably to create a bit of a shaded pole effect I think but there is moving in here or movement so I probably have to delaminate this one at a time because this coal 
moves, but no way. As I was hoping this bar comes apart, but it doesn't. I thought this might be staggered in here, but it's not. So let me see how we get this thing apart. Probably one at a time. Bend these sheets over a little bit, maybe. Not easy. But they must have managed to do that when that clock was built uh, many years ago. Put you guys on pause and I'll work out a plan how it works. Well, I've got the first two out. A bit of wiggle. The first one is the hardest. Now I've got space, so to get this out, because I'm sure other people with clocks have similar issues. You need to bend them up a bit and then uh, you take them out one at a time. And there's, there's more space now on the call. So they must have a similar way when they put this thing together 80 years ago or so. So I can take this all uh, apart. I'm going to attempt to rewind that call, but uh, certainly for lower voltage, not for 110 or 220. Okay, last two. I've got a call, even got a metal plate in here. And as you can see there, the call looks like it's expanded too, so it's it has been pretty hard. Now we've got them pieces. I've got the lead lead in wire off the call. Yeah, this call has been hot because it has distorted the casing. So I'm gonna cut all these windings out and then uh, try to rewind it, see what happens. I did a rewind on an equity clock many years ago. It's just still going fine, it's in a local fire station. This is always, you need to be careful with these knives, they're great, but if you cut yourself, it's just most annoying when it happens. Well, this is the tidiest way to get rid of these calls. I'll put it sideways, I'm less likely to cut myself. Getting pretty messy, it's amazing. And something is tightly packed, or you start unpacking things, the mess you create out of this. I'm nearly there. I like to reuse this former. Should be able to.
I made it to the end. I'm at the leading wire here. I use actually a pretty thick wire for that. A bit more like that. So, and we've got the former here. This pull can. And this amazing amount of power of loose copper junk. So, I'll put the first three turns in here. That's the lead-in wire. There's just some uh, alarm type wire, it's a seven stranded material. So I've got it in here for now and um, I'm gonna have a break and probably cut this video in half here.